Okay, today doing a video on the infamous Siltronics uh, VFOs. Um, this one here is a um, Siltronics Model 90-3 for the uh, Brown and Golden Eagle. And this one is uh, 90-7, which is very close to the frequency for a Golden Eagle. And um, it was converted by somebody else, not me. It's not hard to convert them. Just change a couple of capacitors, the 7 to the 3, so it um, aligns correctly for a, a brown and golden eagle. And somebody uh, redid this one and painted it up and, and did that um, real good. Um, so anyway, um, the difference between the 90s and the 80s, is basically uh, this stuff over here. The ninety, the eighties don't have that switch. They don't. They got the CB position only, which be the bottom of the dial here. You know, up to um, twenty-seven three five zero and a little bit past, and down to twenty-six nine two five, about four channels under one. That's the range of the 80s. Now with the 90s, you know, people wanted more range. Um, just like they did on the Browning uh, Golden Eagle Mark III, they came up with a second uh, scale and a second frequency. So you go to high frequency instead of CB, and you go to that top scale. And if you see, this one is on the um, bottom side of the top scale. It starts at channel um, 35 where the bottom scale ended at 35 over here so this one starts at 35 and over here it goes up the channel um, 83 or so it actually goes past that but the reading stopped there so it goes up to about 90 uh, channel 90 even though it doesn't have markings on it so basically the um, model 80 is basically uh, 4 under to about channel 40 maybe 45 and then the uh, model 90 with the upgraded frequency scale is um, up to about channel 90 with the um, with the dual scale that's the main difference between the 80s and the 90s and the other difference is the 80s don't have the XTAL position those were if you buy a uh, uh, regular fixed crystal or since uh, on these VFOs you would take you know either channel 1 or usually channel 23 crystal out and plug in the VFO what would you what you would do is the crystal that you took out you would just plug into the socket up here you know one of these sockets one two and three and if you got a couple of extra crystals like let's say you you know only use channel 6 so you can get a channel 6 crystal and plug in there and uh, then uh, down here go to that XTAL position and uh, go right to 6 instead of having to tune in the VFO you know nice and stable and all so the 80's didn't have any of that the 90's did um, other than that they're the same VFO and they actually use the exact same PC board even though both of these are 90s, but the um, PC board in the 80 is part for part the same thing. And while we up here, we're going to show you a very common problem with these VFOs. Um, this is the schematic here, and I got some of the highlights, highlights highlighted. How about that word, tongue twister? Anyway, if you see that um, CR5, the Zener diode there, um, it's a 7.5 volt Zener diode and that regulates the voltage um, out of this power supply here um, the, the bridge rectifier and the cap you got 17 volts coming out in a dropping resistor and that Zener diode knocks it down to um, exactly 7.5 volts it regulates that but that Zener diode um, is one of the main culprits that go in these and this one here, I'm going to turn it off before I stick my finger in it, even though it's low voltage. That big diode sticking up there is a 5 watt zener that I put in there. 
the original Zener is a 7.5 volt half watt by the way you know so anything half watt or bigger 7.5 volts will work also uh, on this one you can see on the sides of that Zener diode this one is black and the original one was actually red like this one so I just wanted to show that but um that little guy black guy right there and maybe red and this is the replacement big giant 5 watt I stuck in there um, for a replacement because the Zener was bad in that one so we wanted to show that that a common problem is that Zener if you got you know 17 volts coming out the power supply and if the Zener is shorted you have zero over here and if the Zener is open you have 17 you know going across there because the Zener isn't taking it down but usually Zener is short when they go and I'm going to turn this guy over and go to another common problem with it with these um, is I'm finding that the uh, switch that goes from CB to high frequency and XTAL 1 and 2 which is um, I'm going to use a pencil for a pointer this switch right here with all the wires and stuff to it those wires are um, X, the crystal 1, 2 and 3 um, for the high frequency second scale it switches in both this uh, variable cap and this fixed cap and for the CB band the low frequency it just takes um, this line coming out of the board and turns it um, directly to the variable a tuner so that switch gets dirty and the contacts don't um, um, contact very well you don't get a good connection and you lose power and you lose enough it's not going to work it's not going to oscillate and this one here uh, customers not mine the um, switch had dirty contacts contacts did I say that correctly so I got a burnishing tool which is this guy right here a burnishing tool you put in the contacts and it and it burnishes so it kind of cleans and gets the grime and the gut off. It polishes for the most part. That's a better word. It polishes the contacts rather than a, a file just files off and uh, you know roughness. The file is not good. You always want to burnish or polish a contact or a switch or a relay. So I put the burnishing tool in there and keen the cleaned the contacts and got that going and um, and off this VFO went um, over here you got a little um, amp board that was bought um, I guess on eBay because a lot of times these old VFOs don't put out a lot of um, a lot of juice and they won't put out enough um, to make the radio work correctly or you lose watts in the radio so um, that was an external um, DDS board just to boost the output of this a little bit so therefore it has enough juice to drive the um, the tube radio and this is an old one I had in the in the dungeon uh, for three and it worked real good but um, Somebody had already made a little external amplifier, um, you know, that's probably 20, 30, 40 years old. And somebody made that using a transistor amplifier circuit to boost up the power to drive, you know, a tube radio, you know, like a Mark III. Um, I think that's about all I wanted to go through with it. Well, a little bit more. Um, we did a little here on the schematic. That schematic is the yellow is that switch going to CB the high frequency and that switch goes bad like I say it gets um, dirt and grime and all that in the contacts and it doesn't make a good connection so the um, so the VFO won't work also over here in yellow these three capacitors C13 14 and 15 those are the ones that you change to modify the um, VFOs for different outputs if you can see there on that chart see 13 14 and 15 and then on the right of this chart I wrote in there that L2 on the schematic right there that's the main tuning coil 
that you see right there, this main uh, coil right here with a variable cap on top. That's your main um, coil that makes the VFO worker oscillate and what frequency between the um, coil here and the caps over here that's what determines what frequency this uh, thing is going to work on. It does not have an internal crystal and um, they do drift some. It would be um, more stable if these ran on a crystal but they don't. They run on um, a coil and cap combination. But if you look over here on the chart, it's, it's pretty common that um, people got out this information about what caps they use. But I just counted the turns in the coil for L2. And model 90, that's one has 18 turns. 93, 11.5. 90-5 has 26. And then 90-7, which is very similar to the 93, has 11.5 um, again. So be aware of which model you get um, if you want to convert it over. Uh, it's good to know that um, the different amount of turns in the uh, coil of L2. So that's about mostly what I wanted to go through with today. Let's see if we can fire it up right quick. You know, I'm gonna hook up the um, scope. Actually, we need it to be underneath. <laughs> okay, we got it fired up with the scope connected to it, and um. That's the signal going out of it. Um, putting out um, 1.5 volts. Um, you can see it's at uh, 15 points. Well, moving up and down a little bit, but 16 megahertz. Let's see if we can put it on that uh, other scale. Well, wrong button. There we go. Um, that's the high frequency. You see it jumped up to about 16.5 um, in frequency. And back to the CB down to about 16. So anyway, um, that's going to be it. Just my thoughts on the Siltronics uh, VFO series. Bye.